identity and culture, identity, culture and writing system, identity, culture and ways of expression, identity, culture and art. All of these words are swimming around my head when I try to grasp the brilliance and the innovation um, of Xu Bing, a Chinese artist living, as far as I know, in New York City right now. So how did I find out about Xu Bing and what does he do? Uh, I'm going to try to talk about this in the best way that I can, but to be honest with you, I don't know that anybody could do justice to him or his work, his mastery. Uh, so I'm slightly intimidated by this topic and the link to the original article where I, or the original YouTube video where I, I found out about him has been in my inbox for about two months as I've been trying to convince myself to try to tackle explaining this to you. And I think the only thing I can really do to show you his work is to show you his work. So I'm, I have a couple of places where he describes what he does or why he does what he does with his calligraphy. And then I found another site that explains and shows some more of what he does. So truly, if any of this sounds interesting, you probably wanted to stop the video and go down to the links below uh, to the videos that I watched to see his brilliance. You don't have to hear me describe his brilliance. Um, that's, yeah, that's just meant to be a precursor to being exposed to the really, really amazing things that he is doing. So let's do this. Let's do this. And um, you bet your ass I'm actually going to send him an invite for the Changing Scripts podcast after this because his insight into uh, the two languages, uh, the two languages, as if there aren't more, into a Pudonghua, Mandarin, Chinese, and English, the... Um, the interplay between the two is something that is core. The, uh, in addition to the language interplay, the cultural interplay is is at the core of what he does artistically, it looks like. So, heck yeah, I'm sending him an invite. I seriously doubt he'll take me up on it because I, it's such a new podcast. But I hopefully, hopefully he's intrigued by the idea of talking about this um, with some folks who are learning the language. If anybody wants to join me and do a panel discussion, if he agrees, please contact me directly. Don't worry about putting it in the show notes. Just contact me directly at stephfuccio at uh, gmail.com. Uh, if you go to my Weebly site, then I have a few different ways you can contact me. Anyway, um, so here we go, because I think that would be interesting. If there were a bunch of folks at different stages of learning, Pudanghua talking to him, uh, I think that would be great. Sorry, I'm arranging this whole entire interview, and um, I haven't even found his contact information yet, but I just... People that think this far outside the box and process... People that process their identity challenges, which we all have them, people that process them in a creative, productive way are very inspiring to me. I feel like it's much easier to hit walls and complain than to process and produce and enrich other people's lives through showing your process. And I feel like that's what he does. I feel like I could stop the video there, but I'm going to keep going for a few minutes. Um, so what does he do? Shu Bing changes the Chinese language in a way that is beautiful and interesting and probably blasphemous for some folks. But I'm getting to a point in a video here where I can literally show you what he does. So in my videos I've showed you like typed uh, Mandarin Chinese and um, that's not what he does. He actually plays with the language. Hold on, let me get the sound here. You can read it. It's just an easy to read. Oh, now I'm going to go back a little bit. Yeah. And I'm going to have you watch it with me. So it looks like Hans of characters, doesn't it? Hold on, he's going to explain. You can read it. It's easy to read. Yeah. You, right? May, M, A, Y. C. I, M, right? A dreamer, right? But I'm not the only one. Right? Okay. And if that 
is not clear enough, don't worry, the links are down below. So the other, the only other point I want to make, actually the part of the video I want to show you, is when he explains why this is so important, and I think it's a really interesting point. And the visuals aren't important because they're just shooting to some beautiful scenic spots, so I'll just turn the volume up and play his voice. Okay, so I forgot that he's actually speaking in Chinese, so I'm going to read you what he's saying. You know you've studied too much when you don't understand what's being said in the language that you're listening to, but you forget which language it's in. Here we go. So he says... The actual packaging of the words, and again, these are his direct words, the actual packaging of the words has cultural meaning. I find that most people's, that I find that most Chinese people's way of working, thinking, and viewing aesthetics are all closely linked to calligraphy, he says. These are slow transcripts. So much so that it has influenced how China is today. Okay, and then he goes into that some more. So this kind of English, Chinese, English Hansa character word boxes that he creates is just one project that they cover in this video. There are other books that they cover that are really interesting. I think you should watch the video. What is the total? It's 24 minutes, but trust me, I've watched it three times already. It's well worth watching, so sit back and relax. Most of it's in English, but there are parts of it where he does switch over to Chinese like I just uh, played and read the transcripts of, uh, but the vast majority of it is in English and a large part of it is visual. I'm going to put a second link below because what I found is the Khan Academy, a wonderful uh, online uh, online learning area space, there you go, did a, um, a chapter in their, in one of their art courses on his book from the sky project and I don't want to ruin that too much but it is it is based in the calligraphy stuff that he does it based around the calligraphy art that he does uh, and they have a lot of visuals and a lot of descriptions that are very clear clear concise and uh, not instructions uh, descriptions of what he does and how it looks and they show you some pictures and I think there's even a video uh, of the space and of his creation, which is gigantic and awe-inspiring and really thought-provoking. I really think it's interesting that he blended the two. And I don't think this is the only time I've I've seen um, Chinese and another language blended together. But what he does with the book from the Sky Project is is very very interesting and very. Um, it makes you think about language and communication and. Our comfort zone with language identity and communication and I think if there's ever a time there are other times in the world when we've been rather uh, close-minded and I feel like we're in that time period now if I may get on my soapbox and so things like this that really push us to think of viewing things in other ways I think is really important it's always important. I feel like it's especially important right now when we're being a hair on the selfish side, close-minded, isolated side. Uh, and by us, I mean us. I'm not identifying any one country or culture in this. And there's probably folks that aren't doing it, but whatever. I don't want to be on the soapbox too long. I just want to say, please check him out. He is amazing. Satyan.